This is my life as a teacher, just constantly like rethinking and changing everything. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I'm a kindergarten teacher in Northern California. Check my last vlog if you want to catch up. Today is Monday, first Monday after daylight savings time. We lost an hour. I'm gonna get busy this morning. I don't have a ton to do, but I am gonna go over my PowerPoint and then try to get some maybe center stuff done. I don't know. We're gonna have a good day. I stopped by Starbucks because it's Monday. This is what I got: brown sugar and toffee nut latte. Mmm. That's good, you should try this. One of the first things that I'm going to do is to put Stephanie's name in this book because she donated it to our classroom over the weekend. Updated these sentence CBC practice mats for small groups. You guys like to see what I put in my center folder, so let me show you because I didn't prep them last week. This one is for my lower group, so we're gonna practice handwriting there. I usually do some kind of handwriting practice and then something else to do with letters. So this is an uppercase lowercase match. And then for like my middle groups, this is the missing vowel and then this group, they'll have to decide which word is the right word. They'll both get this sentence paper, which they actually have done good with. This one for my higher group too, just cause they can do syllables when they're with me, but like just doing it on their own, they have trouble. So I don't think they're actually clapping it out. So we're gonna give that to them too. And then they did a good job with this for the past two, week, two weeks. Um, you basically pick a person, you say what they're doing, and then you say when or where they're doing it. So they make their own little, and this is just kind of like a little check for me. They usually can do pretty good with this, but um, that's everything for centers. I also need to make a copy of this on colored paper for our bad seed anchor chart. And hopefully, hopefully I can get this all done. I gotta, gotta move it. See you again until after school, so be right back. Hey, see friends, it's after school. I'm home, obviously. Uh, well, I guess you can't tell. I'm home. Um, I had a huge headache after school, and honestly, I was just exhausted from my day. Today was one of those days where it was just, it was hard. I was tested. You guys know I have that one special friend who takes a lot of my time and my attention, but today um, one of my newer students was who really can't communicate with me was having a really hard time. And it just, by the end of the day, I couldn't talk about anything else. That being said, today is March 15th, which makes it the two year anniversary of when I got to go to Miami and meet all of my teacher tuber friends. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And I've made so many new, more new friends since then, but it's just like remembering that experience. If you haven't seen the video, I'll link it right up here. Honestly, only a 17 minute vlog and the editing skills were on point. I listened to the vlog on the way home and I could so clearly just like picture everything that was happening. I feel like that year as a whole was just so defining for me as a person, as a teacher, as a human being. Like that year was one of the best years ever. I had an amazing class. I had an amazing school. I had amazing friends. I got to take that amazing trip. It was just... It was wonderful and being there on that trip I felt so understood like I was in such a good place and I feel like it's just so different from where I'm at now like the whole atmosphere of my school my life is completely different and it's just been hard for me so listening to that vlog on the way home was really really nice because you know everything going on we need as much joy as we can get so I'll try to catch you up on what I did at school tomorrow but I just kind of wanted to throw that in there because I am someone who really feeds off the energy around me and lately I've just not been feeling so good um, and I can't get into too many details but that's that's a pretty accurate description of it I haven't been feeling great um, so yeah <laughs> Today 
is Tuesday. Um, yeah, I tried to film a little bit of like what I was doing this morning. I didn't get here super early. Honestly, like a chain of events happened. It's like one of those things where it's like you put on like five different outfits and none of them like feel comfortable. So I ended up in a t-shirt, but then at the same time I did like fancy like winged eyeliner today. So I was just like, let's try it. Today ended up being a hot mess, like a hot mess. Take a look at my room. I don't know if you can see. Um, we do not have pods anymore. Every student has an individual spot. And that is because we struggled so bad today. Couldn't get them together. Had to stop so many times. Couldn't do anything with my kids online. It was it was just terrible. And like I had kids who were jumping around the room like frogs, doing cartwheels in the room, running around, chasing each other in the room, hitting each other in the room, screaming, having breakdowns in the room, talking, not working. Like it was just the whole day was a mess. Actually, a lie. Centers was almost great. And then when they cleaned up, they totally lost it. I was proud of them for like that very small moment. But I tell you, I tried so many things today. So many things. Could not be quiet. Let's practice being quiet. Put your head down. They could do it. Then the second we get into something else, they act like crazy people. I read this book today that I thought was really great and I think it did kind of help with tattletaling. Borrowed it from the teacher next door. It's called Don't Squeal Unless It's a Big Deal. Um, because we've had a lot of tattletaling in my class and I was telling the teacher next door and she's like, oh, you should try this book. I think it did help for today and I think it really helps them make that connection. And I love this book because I feel just like the teacher in this book. Like even some of the things that she says are things that I say to my kids too. But like for example, at one point, um, Rachel took my pink marker and she won't give it back. I even asked her two times. Mrs. McNeil put down her cup. Steven, I'm so glad you tried to fix the problem yourself first by talking to Rachel. Like I just like say some of those things. So I really enjoyed this book and I'm glad that she recommended it. Um, but tattletaling was not the problem today. It was just, just about <laughs> everything else. Just not listening, no respect for others, constantly putting our hands on other people. It was, it was rough and as much as I come on here and like share the awesome stuff with you guys, like it is hard right now. Really, really freaking hard. And so I even had my kids today for like literally five minutes. I had them all sit in a big circle, masks on. And we talked about it. I was like, what's going on? What's happening? How does this make me feel? How does it make you feel? Are we able to learn? Are, can we get anything done? No. And we had a five minute conversation about what's going on and how we can fix it. And I was like, okay, because if this problem can't be fixed then I'm gonna have to do something to make sure that we can behave in our classroom and listen like kindergartners. And I told them, I was like, if we can't sit in our pods and work in our pods and all we're gonna do is talk, is talk and play, we're gonna be sitting by ourselves and I gave them so many chances. They couldn't do it. And then at the end of the day when they were supposed to be cleaning up, total, total craziness. And so I had them, it was just about time for dismissal. I had them all on the carpet, backpacks on, ready to go, just like normal. And I just went around, separating desks, moving desks, crates, whatever. Just giving everyone their own space. And some of them were very upset. And I'm like, this is what we're gonna try. You need to show me. And it sucks because it's like, no teacher wants to feel this way. No teacher wants to act this way. No teacher wants to take away things from their kids. But like right now, this is just what needs to happen. And I know in a lot of other schools right now, kids are having to sit that far apart anyway. So like, I don't even think they realize like it's a privilege that they even get to be in pods in the first place, but it definitely will feel like they're losing something. And so I want them to show me that they can work when I ask them to work because we can't get anything done. And I'm to the point where I'm like, I wanna do so many fun things with them, but I can't, and I tell them that. So <sighs> that's what's going on. Um, like I said, we have been working on the Bad Seed Read Aloud, which has been going good. Read Aloud is like the one time during the day that like is going really well thankfully. Here's our anchor chart so far. I totally messed up today because I pulled the wrong drawer. And so we did this today instead of this, but that's okay. We can just do it tomorrow. It's not that big of a deal. So yesterday we worked on retelling with pictures and then they did these little retelling seeds over there. And then today, instead of doing the character setting, problem solution, all that. We retold it beginning, middle, and end, which is, again, what we've been doing in our writing, so that was nice. Um, they helped me write a sentence and then they wrote theirs on this paper, but I'm really liking this flow of doing read alouds because it's similar to what I did at my old school where we would have a read aloud for the week and we would have daily tasks every single day. So it's something I'm used to doing and it's something like a way that I'm used to teaching and I really, really enjoyed it. Plus I feel like it just makes the whole week feel like it's 
um, cohesive. So really enjoying that. Another thing I started yesterday with one of my friends is our Glow and Grow report. And I have these in my TBT. Um, I'll put an image. I can't show you the one I'm using now because it has like his information on it. And this worked for one of my students when I taught first grade. And I don't know why, but I just did not think to do it this year because I've been trying like everything else with this one student. Um, I can kind of show you the beginning. So here's a section of it and he can stamp whether today was like a really good day or a not so good day. Um, and for each day you have a glow, something the student did well, and you have a grow, something the student can improve on. Um, and I go over this with the student every single day and then I sign it and then he kind of signs it. And we have a whole goal for the week. So our goal for this week is work hard and centers with my friends. And that is the goal for the whole week, what we're working towards all week long. And then at the end of the week, I'll make a copy of it and get the parents taken turn on it too. So I'm gonna try that, see how that works. I'm home and I just worked out and I pretty much turned on the camera because I wanted to show you some pretty leaves. Look how pretty the new leaves are. Look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love it. So just watching, you can tell that I don't do a lot of like school things at home. The one thing I do have to do is print. If I want to print color copies, I do use HP Instant Ink. Have been using it since I was in college. I love it. Basically, instead of buying ink every single month, you pick a printing plan. So if you want to print like 100 pages a month, however many pages a month, you pick that plan and they're priced really, really well, especially because you're not having to buy ink. The only thing you have to buy is paper and you can change it from month to month. So if at the beginning of the school year, you are printing like 500 pages and then during the school year, you're only printing like, 100 pages a month or even less than that because your pages roll over it's an ideal thing for you to do if you want to print in color because we all know ink is expensive so the way hp instant ink works is if you have a 100 page plan you could print this is one of my mess ups but you could print a full page of color and it would count the same as a page with just a dot on it. So I really like it, but I do have to do my color printing from home for that reason, just because I can't print in color at my school. I know a lot of schools are like that, or they probably have like a limit for you. But since I am printing, I think, but I'm gonna be adding these to word work. And we actually did some of these um, when I was teaching remotely. So I would just like screenshot the Piece and I'd put it in my PowerPoint and they would use their whiteboards and do it like that. Um, but with these, you can have them use magnetic letters or you could have them write with like a marker on their laminated task card. Or if you have like um, mini eraser letters, you could do that too. I'm sure my kids are gonna love this once I put it in WordBook because they really liked it online. They thought it was super cool. Okay, so here's the bundle. This is kind of what it looks like in her example. And I am gonna use them kind of as task cards. Um, she gives you a little code and then she separates it by vowel. So all of the short A words are here. So this would be t a b tab and these are by move mountains in kindergarten also i'm going to go ahead and show you my little dashboard for hp instant ink so i currently have the 500 page plan i've been printing so much because i probably need to lower it down a notch because i have 1500 rollover pages right now so i am good for printing but it's perfect and they'll send you ink when you run out so you never have to worry about it and here's an example of the plan so light printing is 15 pages and that's a dollar a month occasional printing is 50 pages um, and that's everything you get so pretty good deals don't have to pay for ink they ship it to you can't recommend it enough use my link in my description box because we'll both get a month for free also the one thing that i was planning on doing as you guys saw i have a ton of rollover pages is i wanted to print some um Raz kids like decodable books here at home and i brought like a little bit thicker paper too I just haven't done it yet, but that's something else that you can do is if you have access to um, some books or decodables or things online, like if you are a Raz Kids member, then you can print books at home and it would be super, super cheap and they'd be in color. Instagram and everybody's sharing all their St. Patrick things that they're doing. And I was like, wow, this is a lot of people. And then I realized um, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. I turned to TPT and here's the thing. I did already have some coloring pages that I downloaded, but I'll show you some of the other things that I downloaded that I'm going to prep for them tomorrow. And what I'm thinking we're going to do instead of like our normal, um, like literacy stations, I think I'm just going to have them do 
like St. Patrick's Day themed things. So I'll make them all like a little packet for each of my groups. It's hard because I'm trying to stay away from like the super um, like stereotypical like leprechaun um, and that kind of stuff. So we'll see what we have. The first thing is I got some coloring pages and I've had these for a while. They're from Rainbow Sprinkles um, and she has really good clip art and coloring pages. John just <laughs> went and grabbed some Lucky Charms so I'd have those for tomorrow. This one I paid for and I can't like 100% use it for kindergarten, but I can use some of it. This one was free. I know this is kind of late if you're watching this, but like if you want stuff for next year, this one was free. It's great for kindergarten. And then this one is great for kindergarten by United Teaching and it's free. So yeah, I'm kind of bad with the last minute holiday stuff, but I mean, we'll be okay. baggies that I'm going to be making them. I'm not even going to put the card on the outside. I'm literally just stuffing it in and dumping it in. So here we go. All right. My lovely husband put the tags in them and sealed them while I stuffed them and they're all done in like two minutes. Good morning. It's St. Patrick's Day today, which I forgot my watch today, but it's still going to be a good day, even though I'm going to feel naked all day without it. <sighs> so sad about that every time. Okay. So first thing I need to do is to print the St. Patrick's Day activities, get some colored paper, make some copies for that, get all that sorted. And then I'm going to separate my supplies because they are currently still in the caddies because I just left yesterday because I didn't feel like doing it. School is tough right now to begin with, but the thing is like something has to happen with these kids. So we're gonna try this today, see how it works out. I just really need them to know that I'm serious about this. Like I'm not playing a game when I say something, I mean it. And this is what has to happen. And hopefully we can still have some fun today. Um, I'm sure they will be okay and like i said like across the country now like this is what schools look like so i don't know <laughs> i wanted to go to starbucks for the third day in a row because i was feeling it this morning but i didn't so i have my irish cream coffee instead so it's like irish cream st patrick's day let's do it my computer always has the hardest time connecting to the wi-fi like i can't connect to the school wi-fi anymore i can only get on like our Wi-Fi that's for the kids and then I can't like play YouTube videos during the day. It's like this whole, whole ordeal. Okay, these are done. I did try to make the top pages match. That way they wouldn't necessarily know they were getting like easier work or harder work. One thing you can do for like theme days or holidays, things like that is take all of the sheets that you would want them to do throughout the take all of the sheets or activities, whatever you'd want them to do throughout the day, have it all like ready for them kind of at the front. And there's these games. I don't remember who they're by. Maybe Cooties and Cuties, I think maybe, but they're called like unlock the, so like it'd be like unlock St. Patrick's Day or unlock the rainbow or unlock something. And all the kids get, I'll probably put like a visual in here. All the kids get like a little piece, like a game board piece. And when they complete something, they move it. And when they get to the end, they get a prize. So they complete everything you want to do and then at the end they get a surprise. Um, so for my kids, like it would be these papers that we have and then they would get like the lucky charms at the end. I didn't plan ahead that far, obviously. And also I don't have like a whiteboard for them to like move pieces on that is magnetic, but I don't know. I just don't think it would work very well. So I'm gonna finish prepping all of their supplies and get them in bags and then I'll be done. Today was another hard day and I feel like it's not as important that I go into like so much detail with you about like, things that happen, but like, there's your detail. So yeah, it's so hard. I'll just start with the good. Um, we did our St. Patrick's Day like packet things. They did pretty well. I was surprised at how quickly some of them did it. Um, I was surprised at some of the students who didn't know some of these things, cause these are all topics in here that we've covered, but like it made me realize that I need to spend more time like skip counting by tens. Cause like I thought they had it, but I don't think they do, at least maybe in the way that it was presented, but they should have been able to do it, is the picture 
like completing the picture. This is one of my students who has a hard time, but we hadn't done one of these before. It's where you fill in the other half of the picture. And some of my kids took off, it was perfect. Some of my kids were like, what do I do? So it was interesting to kind of see that. But that was fine. We did our um, like Lucky Charm little gift thing and they were really excited about that. And that's pretty much it. I need to be better, you guys know. I need to be better about planning um, like fun activities and stuff. So for April, I know for sure that that's going to be a main focus, which I will say that these retailing crafts, you can see our anchor chart back there, are really, really helping me because we can create like these fun little crafts at least that are still like educational. That'll help with that. Um, today was the first day that we did these crates being like spread apart like that. And I'm not totally impressed with their behavior today, but all of the parts where they struggled were parts when they were like on the carpet. So like they were with their friends. So the times when we were working at our seats, I feel like they did a really good job and I feel like it just like really worked for them. And keep in mind, these crates are not something that I like would typically do. And it was just my makeshift like COVID solution, but it was really, like interesting to see like how differently they worked when they weren't like right next to someone. I feel like that made a really big difference, at least with these group of kids. Um, and I do feel like they definitely focused a lot more. We did our bad seed um, character setting solution, which we were supposed to do yesterday, but I mixed them up. And like, I'm not gonna show you what it looks like, but you can see there's character setting, problem solution. We did a really good job. Like we worked on it together, probably some of the best like guided work that we've done together. And part of me is like, well, maybe it's because they weren't getting distracted by all of their friends. So I don't know, kind of worked for today. The best part of our day, and I saved it for the very end because like just in case we didn't have time, um, was this actually, it's like a little tic-tac-toe with a friend sheet. And so I gave all of them a clipboard, but I had them outside and I told them that they need to like find different partners to play tic-tac-toe with. And so there would be one partner and another partner and they'd play one game on this person's board and one game on the other person's board until they filled them all up. And they loved this. This was so much fun to watch them do because they just kept, you know, partnering up and playing tic-tac-toe and then finding a new partner like I want to find or think of like more ways that I can incorporate like that kind of like game like structure where they find one partner then go find another partner then go find another partner with, like an I have who has but like more self guided do you know what I'm talking about like more self guided if you have any ideas on things I could do that kind of follow that same pattern where they need to seek other people out who have things, let me know. Cause I know there's like a way, I'm just totally blanking. Like I want to incorporate it into like maybe literacy or maybe a different kind of math thing that they can do. But I just can't think of anything right now. So maybe you guys have ideas. The other thing I will say is that when I taught first grade, routine we had with books is we'd have a read aloud for the week and each day we'd go back in for different teaching points and doing that with kinder has been really great. It's fun to see like the different things they pick up on the second read or the third read or even like the fourth read of this book and they enjoy it more every time. Like you would think like, oh, they've heard the story and it won't be as entertaining, but they like it more because they know the story. So they'll like read along with me or they'll like say what's gonna happen next and they get really excited about it. So. I really like that I've been doing our read alouds like this. And I don't know why, I honestly, I don't know why I didn't do it like this from the beginning. I think it was just, I'm just figuring everything out. Like I will do next year totally different than how I've done this year. I mean, I have to, cause we won't be online. Hopefully we will not be online next year, but it's just, it's just interesting because I feel like this year I've learned so much about kindergarten. Um, that's really going to make a big difference whenever I have a new set of kits next year. So yeah, I really like this. In other news, we have finished writing our first personal narratives. Um, my students really struggled with adding details. I think because the way I set it up um, when I was pulling groups for writing this whole past week and doing like the sentences with them is the other students were just like working on their picture and waiting for me to write. So their pictures were already like as detailed as like they could make them. But I was still surprised to see like how many of my students just didn't, you know, didn't want to add their labels, which we've been working on all year long in our writing. I think it was just really cool to see kind of how this played out. And some of my students I think are going to be 
more motivated I think this next time to do it just seeing like some of the other students work so I'm excited to have them share I also just want them to be like really really proud of this like this is awesome and I'm so so impressed by them and I really want it to be like a huge huge deal that they completed their first personal narrative because it's actually like it is one of those things where it's like this is a real accomplishment for a lot of these kids so yeah just really really excited about that writing this is what I have for plans so far so I've kind of just been like writing down what I need to print and I'm printing it um, I have to print a couple things at home for next week in color. We're going to be working on CBC eWords with the vowel I, I next week. So, oh my gosh. So I started like planning all that out. I have planned our read a lot for next week. We're going to do dandy. And then I planned our math out. So we're going to do decomposing numbers all the way up to 10. We're only going to get to like nine this week. But that's basically what I was working on. It just takes a lot of effort to like think and plan. And in my head, I just feel like that's not something that you guys want to like see and hear every single week. But if you do, let me know. I'm trying to like share as much as I can without being like boring and have you just like listen to my thoughts. So the CBC words that we've been doing this week are all CBC words with the letter A. So like make or take or why can't I think of a different one and it's really nice because like in their writing now like their CBC words are coming up and so if they're writing a word that's home and they put o -m h o m I can say that says home can you make it say home and like they'll know what to do they're not doing it on their own I don't think they will maybe for a little while but it's just really I don't know it's satisfying to know that they have like all these tools now so yeah, that's been going well. Oh, we got a donation to our classroom and it doesn't say who it's from. It says from anonymous, um, but the message was really, really sweet and I really, really appreciate it. They sent us these, which I've had on my wish list for a long time now. And they're basically like little CBC word spinners. Um, so I'll kind of open it and show you. you. Spin and like you can make a new CBC word. So this is O and there's all the vowels in there in blue. But I'm really excited for these because kindergartners love anything that is like hands-on, that they can move, they can touch. So this will be great for our centers. Um, I'll probably put it in a little basket or a bin, probably not in the box. But yeah, I've been wanting these for a long time, so I'm really, really excited to have them. Thank you. And the other thing that they sent were these headphones, noise-canceling headphones, and I stuck some stars on them um, for the student so I could tell him that these are his superstar headphones because anything in my classroom that's like, I don't know, kind of important, I guess I call it like superstar. I don't know, I don't know why that started, but it started with our writing superstar song, which you guys know very well by now, I'm sure. Then we have our math superstar, which is our warm up, and these are my friend's superstar headphones to help him focus, and he tried them out today. I think they helped. I really do, so thank you so much. I'm trying everything I can with these students who like really need my help. I'm trying so hard and I'm absolutely exhausted, but like it's just difficult because you want, you just want there to be an easy fix, an easy answer. You just wanna say, oh, this is the thing that's gonna work. This is the thing that's gonna fix it. This is the thing that's gonna help this student. And it's not, it's just not that easy. So yeah, I'm trying everything. Thank you for these. I ordered some of those um, like three drawer Sterilite paper bins because my friend Anne Marie on Instagram, I'll put her little picture and her handle up here. She has drawers for her writing like publishing papers and I really wanna do that too. That way I'm not like handing them to students and they can kind of go and grab them when they're ready, which is like the ultimate goal. Originally when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, they'll fit perfectly right here but in my brain i guess that space was bigger because clearly like uh it's not gonna fit in this little row so what i think i might do is put them like here on this shelf so i'm gonna head out i always get caught up talking to you guys watch this vlog still be like an hour long <laughs> i'll see you guys in a minute it's after school on thursday something about thursdays you know just makes you just makes you wish it was Friday. <laughs> so um, today was a lot better, I think. Today's probably, yeah, probably the best day we've had all week. It felt more calm, could be due to the weather. It is uh, raining outside, so there's that. These headphones worked pretty well for like chunks of our day, which is nice. I got this book in the mail and I think, yeah, it's from the same person who sent the items that you guys saw earlier with the little blocks and the headphones. So thank you, oh, thank you. 
this is my rainy day rocket ship and I'm doing it for um, our April read alouds and there's like a craft and everything to go along with it too and I really really like it I'll take you inside a little bit I need to write donate it to Miss Call's class okay here's a little sneak peek I'll try to like hold it open with my <laughs> Really excited about this. Um, oh, speaking of the little twist words, I made a little like recording sheet for them. So it just says twist and write, and then they can like make a bunch of words. But they look like this. Is that right to you? Maybe like that. And you twist them and you make different words, and each one has a vowel. I think I showed you these. But I made a little recording sheet to go with it. And I'm gonna stick it in here in this bin and throw some um, red and blue markers. I actually let one of my kids try it out today just with like a whiteboard marker and they liked it. So I think this will be exciting. Also speaking of centers, I purchased a few of these. You can see them right here. These little three drawer Sterilite bins. So I have a cover page, beginning, middle, ending templates, these writing lines, and then I need to print like, um, like a larger version of those writing lines. I just forgot to do it today. And I'm gonna stick them in here as like our writing publishing drawers. Okay, this is what this currently looks like. I'm gonna label the outside. So this will have like step one and it'll say like BME beginning, middle, end. And then this will also say step one beginning, middle, end, but it'll have like the writing lines. So just like differentiation. This bottom drawer is like hard to pull. I don't know if it's cause it's like not full but I feel like I might have to like warn my kids. Then I'll say step two, writing, and this is two lines, and this is more lines. So these would both have like a number two on them. And then step three will be the cover, and then this is like just a mini book option. So this page I printed front and back so that they can make like a little mini book. Also, we've obviously been doing the bad seed all week, right? Well, today, our like little writing to go with it is I am a good seed because and I had them like write a reason we made like a little um, I'm saying anchor chart but I just took a piece of paper and put it under the document camera and just like wrote down like why are you a good seed and I had them share reasons why they were a good seed and I wrote them down I had them write and then we did a directed drawing I messed up super cute they thought it was adorable um, and they did a good job with like the perspective thing I wasn't sure how that was gonna go, but I just tried it. Um, the problem lies in the pencil, okay? You can guess what they looked like. This one, not so bad, not so bad. His little sidewalk is so cute. Not so bad. Kind of looks like a weapon, right? Maybe not, but I kind of think it does. I do think it is intended that they draw a picture of like, oh, them doing the good seed action. Here's the little anchor chart. That I made, yeah, nothing fancy. Um, but I thought doing directed drawings for these would be a good idea just because, I don't know, I like doing little directed drawings with them and it kind of gives them more confidence to draw things. Their people drawing this morning. Our morning journal prompt was, would you rather be a teacher or a principal? And you guys know that we have been working so hard on our people drawing skills. We have that anchor chart and I just feel like they came out so nice and it wasn't even like, I was like, make sure you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. Like, I'll point out the chart every now and then, but like, they're actually doing it by themselves now, which is the goal, which is what we want. So that's exciting. So like I've been saying this whole vlog, the themed weekly read alouds is working really well. Next week, we're gonna be doing Dandy, which I don't have the book. I'm just gonna be pulling up the um, like YouTube read aloud because the book is like $18, and I just, it's, it's so hard. I spent so much money on books on supplies on gifts on just so many things and it's hard to like buy a book every single time and dandy is one that i actually would really like but i just i just can't do it right now like i just can't so we're gonna be doing the youtube read aloud um and the craft is like this cute little lion i'll go ahead and show you my planner just so you can kind of see where i'm at i think pretty much everything i think everything is done Okay, I think this is nice and focused for you guys. So um, let's just start over here. I don't know our sight word. I think it's gonna be come. Okay, so the sight word is come. We're gonna do CBC words with I, and we're just gonna do like some interactive come up here and make it the long vowel sound. Then we're gonna start dandy in those activities. 
um, small groups and centers, and then personal narrative. We're going to be starting a brand new one, and then we're decomposing numbers um, up to 10 is our standard. So my G means guided. So guided, 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 and like the next day it'll be guided, independent, guided, independent. That's my little system for that. And then I have distance learners stuff there. So this is kind of an overview of what the week looks like. Um, we're starting the decodable hit next week. So this is what it looks like. On the first day I read it, the second day they will color the sight words and the um, beginning. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Here's the one we have this week. And so we go through and we color all of the sight words. Um, I do yellow. And then we put a dot under the first letter and underline the rhyme. So we would say m -ug mug just to help them like read the word a little bit quicker. So that's good. And it's also like good visual cues. So we're gonna be doing that on the second day. And then like the third day they get to read it and color it. And then the fourth day, like partner read all that stuff. So we're gonna practice doing math centers every Friday until we get to our full schedule. When we come back from spring break, which let me show you. This is kind of what I've mapped out. I like played with so many different ones. Like this is our schedule now, um, in case you wanna see it here, I'll move it over. This is our current schedule right here. And then this is the one that I was kind of like figuring out before I got to this one. So this is kind of what I think our day is gonna look like. I do have the freedom to decide my own schedule. So I have STEM and morning journals morning meeting and then enrichment. We don't have specials at this school, at least, well, first grade has music. We don't have like a normal specials rotation. So I'm just gonna do an enrichment time um, where I'll rotate between these things right here, music, movement, computers, field trips, like virtual field trips I thought would be fun. And then Thursday and Friday would be art, art. And I actually had specials at my old school in the morning. I kind of liked it. So I'm just calling this enrichment whatever. Um, then I'm going to move into phonics and sight words, mentor sentence, spelling, shared reading. So this, these three sections right here are kind of like my literacy teaching block. And then we're going to go into literacy centers. And after literacy centers, we do snack, which is what they're used to now. Then when we come back inside, we do writer's workshop, which is what they're used to now. I am extending the time to 40 minutes, which will help greatly. And then we're going to go into math, which is what we do now. We go snack, center snack writing math which has worked out great for us i'm extending my math block because it's not nearly long enough and then i want to add in centers every day then after math and centers we'll do lunch and recess and then when we come back in we'll do a read aloud. i thought that would be a nice little transition because it'll kind of calm them down and they love books and they'll still be really into the literacy lesson then after that it'll be um, like an activity so like these activities that go with it every day after the read aloud, the lesson, they'll do one of these. And then I was thinking like a read to self time. I'm not really sure. It might just be like, I don't know. This one is the only one I'm kind of like iffy on. And then after that, we'll do science or social studies. And then my intervention time is at the end of the day where I will probably give my students like free choice or do computers during this time. And then we leave. So I worked for probably two hours on this schedule. So yeah, I know you guys have told me in the past it's helpful to see other teachers' schedules or just kind of like how they think about the day and how they structure the day. So that's how I'm planning on doing it whenever we get back from spring break and we go to our full schedule. And I think the good news is um, I only have a couple of kids online still and I think some of them are gonna come back when we go to that full schedule. So it'll be a little bit easier to do the hybrid teaching as well. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna head home. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, you find it helpful, give it a like, support your friends. I'm home, I thought I'd show you some like, I don't know, I don't wanna call it behind the scenes, but I thought I'd show you um, the labels that I'm making for those Sterilite bins. I did check TPT, I didn't find any that I liked, so. Here's my setup. Okay, so I've got Braylon in the side panel over here. I always like to watch videos while I do these kinds of things. Um, okay, so I checked TPT. I didn't find anything I liked. And I was like, whatever, I'll just do it because I have nothing better to do right now because John's not even here. So um, this is kind of the design I went for so that I would match like other things in my classroom. I have step one, plan, and the pictures. I just took a screenshot, so I think it's here. I just took a screenshot and then inserted it like right on top for these. So lines, no lines, and then we'll go back to her face so you can look at her. And then this is the drawer for the mini book right here. And then the other one is step two, which is right and right, which it's, I feel like it's like gonna be kind of small, but I think they'll still be able to see it. Um, but to do these, I just very simply got my image that I wanted, 
put it in there. Oh, actually first I made this shape and I made it the size that I wanted. I think nine and a half by like two-ish is what I did. And then I put my shape behind it in the very back, added all these elements on top. And then this is white text with black outline and then black right behind it to offset it and make it look better. It came out so good and you can actually see like what they are. I was worried it would be too small. I hope these fit. I'm pretty sure they're gonna fit. Hi, I woke up from a nap. I have to work out. It is 8.07. Latonya closed her rings. Very exciting for her. Um, yeah, I'm just really tired, but I woke up and I checked out my people and I had a package and I can't just, I really can't put into words how much it means to me that for one, you guys would watch my videos, for two, that you interact with me, for three, that you think like you would even consider donating to my classroom. That means a lot. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to my kids. So thank you. I feel like I can't say it enough. Saying it to a camera doesn't feel like enough, but truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, Shayna Q <laughs> sent us a couple of books. The first one is Florette. I'm really excited for it because I have a read aloud planned for it. And like I looked it up on YouTube and I was like, it doesn't look like super high quality on YouTube, not the book. The book is super high quality, which is why I am so excited to actually have it in person. Look, just so glad to add it to my collection. And I love that you picked this one for me because it's so like me, I just love it. And then the other one is a really fun one, especially for kindergarten, it's called Bird Hugs. And again, I have a whole read aloud lesson planned for this one too. And it's about this cute little bird who has like super long wings and he like feels like he doesn't fit in. He doesn't know what to do with them. I also love when authors do things like this where they'll, they'll have to turn the page and then flip the book. They love that. Thank you so much. And the awesome thing is like, I'm gonna read these books, not tomorrow, but I'm gonna read them like right away. So I think that's really cool too. But also you said you're a clinical psychology student and you're an intern. You have no interest in being a teacher, but you like watching my videos. I think that's so cool because like for a lot of teachers, like our job is so stressful that like even we don't want to like have anything to do with teaching at the end of the day. But to think that someone could like watch teaching videos to relax, I mean, I do obviously. Um, that's just so neat to me. If you're someone who isn't a teacher that watches my videos, I just want to know like, do you like watching teaching videos because you've just like, never seen this side? Is it genuinely interesting? Are you a parent so you find it interesting? Like what is it about teaching videos that is exciting to you? I'm really genuinely curious. Stay tuned to see how I'm using all these books in future lessons. And now unfortunately I have to work out. <sighs> Cardio. Least favorite workout. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I just noticed the more I feel came straight into the office um, and put on my sweatshirt again because it was cold. Um, but yeah, I have this book and it's called Yardsticks. You guys maybe heard me talk about it a long time ago, but it basically breaks down like developmentally where children are like in the classroom. So when I taught first grade, I like would read it every like couple of months just to like really understand. Um, and I was like, during my workout, I was like, you know, I really should like go through and like read the five-year-old, six-year-old section just to kind of, you know, re-familiarize myself with it and just kind of get that more like realistic understanding back in my mind because I know, yeah, I know that I've been struggling <laughs> a little bit in the classroom. So it's funny because it says things like, um, five-year-olds, growth patterns, physical, often fall out of chairs sideways. <laughs> Social, emotional, um, need verbal permission from adults before doing something. That's a big one in my classroom. And like my kids don't have to ask to go to the bathroom or get a band-aid. Like I tell them every day, you don't have to ask, you don't have to ask, but they still ask and I'm like, go. Um, there's a lot of really good things in here. I, I would say it's a hundred percent worth you picking up. Cognitive, like to copy and repeat activities, think out loud, talk their thoughts. Yep, for sure. I'll give you a little um, overview of the kind of things that are in this book in case you're interested in it or in case you are in college and you just think it'd be a nice little read because you can kind of see the progression. 
um, through the whole book. So let me just let me just show you. So here's the book again, and I think I have this in my Amazon linked for you guys. But it gives you a couple of pages, just like an introduction to five-year-olds or whatever age you're looking at and then it'll give you their growth patterns so here's like a preview of what the five-year-olds looks like and then the classroom behaviors or patterns um so like their motor abilities cognitive growth social emotional behavior which is when i was like wanting to go back and look at it's very comprehensive and it will really help you understand especially if you're like me and you're in a new grade um this <laughs> so so important one thing that's very um it's not a relief but it's just kind of something that like clicks for me is at the beginning of the year of course they're going to go through this phase where like they want to please you and they want to be good at school and then as they turn into six-year-olds they need consistent rules and discipline even more than earlier in the year because they're testing those limits and i just thought that was like <sighs> exactly what i'm experiencing like i'm having to structure things more for them and kind of put bigger rules and bigger boundaries in place just because they're testing those limits and it's not making for a great, a great classroom environment when we should be at the point in the year where we're like getting the most out of it and not having to stop and like deal with behavior issues in the classroom. So it even goes through curriculum um, and what you should think about. I have parent-teacher conferences next week, so I should probably like keep this with me because I can straight up like pull this out and say like, yeah, absolutely. Labeling a house with just the letter H is totally age appropriate for them right now. I think it's hard because especially first-time parents, they're not really quite sure what to expect or what to compare like their child to. And they're, I think a lot of them forget like how much you learn in kindergarten. So I think some of my parents um, might need some of these, I guess, validations. So, okay, it's Friday. I got an Irish cream cold brew with the vanilla sweet cream cold foam. And I, cold foam, <laughs> cold foam. And I think they put like some kind of cocoa powder on top. So good. You know what? I almost made a smoothie this morning. And then I said, nah, <laughs> I'll just get some more coffee. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you that those labels that I worked on yesterday left them on my uh, coffee table at home? Because I did. So <laughs> I can't label those drawers yet, but that's okay. I was kind of hoping to have them labeled before the kids got here just so I could like explain it because you know they're going to ask questions, but that's okay. I really quickly... <laughs> Oh, forgot that I got a sandwich um, just because I didn't bring a lunch for today. I love this one. I'm gonna write in these and stamp them. Teaching stamp. Next important thing on my list is to do my weekly newsletter which is honestly gonna take me like two seconds. Also, today is one of my kids' birthdays and he has been talking about it like all week long. Friday after school, thank goodness. Today was a struggle, but it was also a really fun day. Like we were still able to have plenty of fun even though this happened today among other things. Luckily I can snap it back in. I think these these kid headphones were kind of made to be a little rough and tough. I, gotta, I just gotta figure out. My poor friend who threw them was so upset when they broke. Okay. I think that's good, okay, not a problem. I didn't want him to think that I could fix them, so I was like, oh, I guess they're broken now, that's what happens when we throw things. I don't think he expected them to break when he threw them, but that's what happens when you throw something, it breaks, so luckily they're they're fine. They do help them throughout a lot of the day. You just had a hard time a little bit later. So, um, we did our watercolor today. They are so cute. I was originally planning to do the entire thing watercolor, but they're just learning how to use them, so I thought it might be better to start with like part of our paper being watercolor. So I decided to do tulips. 
As always, a wide variety of kindergarten art. We love that. Two of my kids had to go home right when we started it, so that stinks. But um, I think they did a really good job. They were like super, super careful. I like pulled them onto my back table just so I could like explain it for the first time. I know it's so sad that we haven't used watercolors yet, but we really haven't had that much time in the day and we were not even in person for a good chunk of the year. So I whipped them out today and I was like, show me that you can use them like a kindergartner. And they did, they did a really good job. And some of them were like, I have these at home. And they were so excited to like show me and it was, it was really sweet. So that worked out well. Um, we finished up the bad seed today. That was good. We also kind of just like wet our feet in some of our math centers and they really, really like them so far. And of course, um, they were working hard the whole time, the whole five minutes that we had them out, but I just wanted to like introduce them to them, show them how to use them, get them working, tell them great job, put it away. Like I didn't want to have any room for like, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing or any room to fail. Like I just wanted them to be successful in one math center today. And they did for five minutes, which is perfect. <laughs> I did hang up the bad seed anchor chart. I thought it might be nice if I moved our character setting or character setting fiction and nonfiction charts that are right here, these three. If I hung them up here, which this is where I hung that bad seed, um, read aloud that we did this week. But I kind of want to keep our read alouds that we've done for the month, like current. So I think I wanna put the bad seed one here and put these like up by our small group area. So like our small group area is here. That does mean I have to hang up three anchor charts on the ceiling right now, which I don't really wanna do. That is what it looks like. I think it looks really good. It's so sad because this space up here is like too small for an anchor chart, but it's like not big enough for anything else. Maybe I should change my calendar while I'm here to April. <laughs> okay, so we have our character setting and then fiction or nonfiction, which also look how perfectly it fit right there. And I was like, not even thinking about that, but the light is in the way. That fits perfectly. I honestly think I like it better being here because if we're at the carpet, they can just look up there. Um, of course, they have all these like phrases memorized now and all of our movements for it. So we got hanging anchor charts here, here, and now here, which the nice thing is, since these are displayed for the whole group area, if, if I wanted to, I could display something else on this side of the rug in the library. I'm not sure if I ever will, but now I can hang up the bad seat here. Okay, here's what we got. So as we do our anchor charts, we'll put them up here and I can put the read aloud if I have it down here. Um, I know for a fact I don't have Dandy, which is the next book we're gonna be doing, but they did love 52 and Hair Love is like one of their favorite books. Also, Knuffle Bunny and the Good Egg. So these will be here for now. They read this one all the time. And then I'll just add like the coordinating book with it. So then they can read it when they're in the library. And then they can also like look back at it. So yeah, I love that. Love that idea. Good job, Maylene. I can go ahead and update my April word wall. So I'm the kind of person who, and let me know if you relate, when you get an idea in your head, you just wanna go ahead and do it, like get it done. So I was thinking like it might really help some of my friends, like even though we do sentence writing every single day, like it would probably really help some of my friends if I had like little sentence starters in the writing center and I don't know why I haven't thought of it uh, sooner. I have a feeling I'm just gonna be here for a while. Fridays are our early days, so we get off early anyway, but there's so much like on my mind that I wanna do and I wanna get ready. I was thinking maybe I should go get some food because I'm gonna be here for a minute and I didn't bring lunch. And the one thing I've had today is an Uncrustable and one of my One Up protein bars and coffee. Oh no, I had a breakfast sandwich, so I'm probably fine. I did sit in my car for a good 10 minutes and debate if I wanted to go anywhere and I was like well I definitely want to get coffee and then I opened my app and I was like well I have stars <laughs> that I can use and I've never had Starbucks grilled cheese <laughs> so we'll, we'll try it this side looks a little better I don't even know what kind of cheese is on it we do a pull test it's been sitting for a little bit okay oh 
Okay. Okay. That was a fail. But kind of good. I'm glad I did that because I feel so much better. And I know I'm going to be here because I'm going to be printing. I have to make um, like one copy for my anchor chart that I'm going to do. I'm going to be making an anchor chart. I'm going to be doing lots of stuff to just like get caught up and kind of like get started for the next month, honestly, is more what it feels like. Also, I got the, um, what is it called? Like the brown sugar blonde shaken espresso. We've already had this conversation. If you watched my, I think it was my what I eat in a week video. If you, if you haven't seen it, click right up here to watch. It's literally just a food vlog pretty much. But if you order the, it's a Starbucks double shot on ice, but if you order the shaken espresso as a shaken espresso and just put in the brown sugar syrup, change the espresso to blonde and then sub oat milk it's the same thing and it's 3.95 not six dollars which is what i did today so this is what it looks like i stink at remembering to write down everything i need to do i stink at it and i need to be better at it we're gonna be better at it and i'm gonna put a couple of things on there that i've already done because i can let's do it let's make our list in pink that sounds fun and festive I mentioned how I wanted my kids to be able to like retell this book in library and like as we go through the weeks have the book there with the anchor chart so they can practice retelling but I realized the book I'm doing next week dandy like I already explained I'm not buying it so it won't be oh you know what I can do I can do a little um does she have a QR code in the pack that they can scan and listen to it I might do that that would be a good idea. Probably something that's gonna happen next week is the book QR codes, so I'll just put it here. Making a list should make me more productive. So tell me why I just sat here for 20 minutes doing nothing. Okay, so here's my list. Let me show you. On the newsletter, I need to put the center floors together. I printed the writing pages, but actually I need to make some more copies. So we'll leave that there. I did the writing labels. I just need to bring them home. I updated the April writing. And I need to print my center tracker. Update sideways. I need to do that. 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 I need to do all this. Don't need to, but I choose to. Stuff like this, even though it's like pretty late to be putting it in the center, really it's not because my kids are just getting to the point where they can actually write like a good sentence. But it's great to know for next year too, because whenever I introduce the writing center, we can do these sentence starters together. I think, I mean, ideally I would teach it whole group and then like have them tell me how to do it and then put them up there. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put them up there. And then when we're doing our personal narrative next week and they're helping me write, I'll refer to the sentence starters. That way I can get them up. Um, but I like this. And I also don't know why I overthought it and was like, oh, I need to type it. I don't, like this is great. Okay, they're up. But see, now my problem is I'm like, I should have put them in green because green means like start. And I was thinking how cool would it be to have like, some kind of like center where they have their beginning, middle, and end of their sentence with like green, yellow, and like red or pink. Is it too, should I change it to green? Nope, they're gonna stay, okay. Today's just one of those days. Um, so I think I'm gonna move this, which was right down here. And I think I'm gonna put it perfectly. And I said I wanted my kids to do retelling, so I think I'm gonna print another set of the Bad Seed retelling cards in color and then laminate them and have them or not even yeah maybe i should laminate them and have them over here and they can practice retelling it with the pictures too because that'll help some of my el kids and the thing is having it over there my kids used it but they didn't use it as much as it's like worth it to have like most of them just preferred to lay the cards out on the table if they were using cards instead of using the pocket chart this is my life as a teacher just constantly like rethinking and changing everything question is how do i hang it up I have command strip, like a lot and I love that it's right here and they can just retell it. So I'm gonna print the bad seed again 
and I'll probably go ahead and do Danny's this week. I can't decide if I want to do it on color or not. I probably will since I have so many like color pages that I can use and they'll probably like it more. So that is awesome. I feel like whenever you have this creative energy as a teacher, you need to take advantage of it because otherwise, like you never know when it's gonna be back. So that being said, I'm doing more things that I don't need to be doing. I changed this. Um, I got rid of the Sterilite bin and I just went ahead and put the Writing Superstar papers in here and I moved the other papers like just down there to where they're, they don't need them. Um, and I rearranged this a little bit. I'm gonna be putting some sorts in this bin so they can use these to sort um, probably short and long vowels because that's what we're doing. And then these are still in here. And then I'm thinking for these, which are currently in here, I'm gonna make some new ones, kind of update them, and then put them in here by color. And then that way those will be organized and I can use these for the ones that I need to laminate. So these will be the new task cards that go in there. I might go ahead and just switch them out now, just so they won't be in color order, but just so my kids are like used to it. Um, I think that's all I wanted to explain over here. I put up my little, it just says starters over there because I started it too far over. So sentence starters. And I put the other Sterilite bin here at my little teaching center just because I've been like, like these. I've been throwing these things all up here when I really just want like a little extra place to store these things. I mean, my cart that's for the week is right here, but like I just want it to be like right like right here. So if we're like working on writing that week, I can stick it in here, all that stuff. So it would just be nice if I could have them in here. And then it wouldn't be like messy up here anymore because it's been driving me crazy. So we'll put these, why is the bottom drawer so hard to pull out? We'll put them in there. So the little bin that I had over there just had these, um, I don't even know what they're called. You guys know what they are though, the little, rubber band shape things, and I wanna use them in math centers, so I'm putting those here. I'm going to build some tables, or I might just pull up, mm, no, I think I'm gonna build two of these brown tables and like have them here. And I also think it'll be helpful when they're in the library just because I think they'll be more encouraged to sit like in the middle. I have this table here, so it's annoying because they always wanna sit like right over there. Um, so I think that table will just encourage them to like be here more. My hair is up in a pencil for the first time ever. I've literally never done this. I didn't have a hair tie though, or a clip. Tell me if it's cute, hold on. Is that cute? Can you see? Is that cute? It feels like it's wor working. I feel like that's such a teacher thing to do, but I've never done it. Okay, um, I took the table apart. Why? Because it felt super cluttered. <laughs> okay, I, on the list of things I did not need to do today, but I did anyway. Um, exhibit A, I created this little sign because I'm gonna use this container to put the retellings in, and I printed it out on cardstock. Doesn't that look so cute? Okay, half of it is because the clip art is cute. The clip art is from Rainbow Sprinkles Studio. This is like one of my favorite clip art people. So we've got a cute little book, cute little coffee cup, just cause it's like, I don't know, a book club. And then I put the BME there. So I'm gonna hot glue it here. Um, I'm gonna print probably a bunch of the picture retelling cards at home just for like the next couple of books. That way I don't have to like do so much work every single week. And then I'm going to put them in here. I might laminate them. I'm running low on laminating sheets, which is why I have not laminated that big pile of things that I wanna laminate. But I do wanna go ahead and make my dandy anchor chart. This is the retelling craft that goes along with it. So I'm gonna cut this out and then just flip it to the back so that you don't see this on the anchor chart. <laughs> Since I left the picture cards and all that at home, this is all I'm gonna do, just glue this stuff on. And then I can like write down what I need to write down later. Um, and yeah, we're gonna fill the chart up next week. I'm just gonna take these and cut them. And I'm gonna put them on the list for this week. 
of things that I need to do. Okay, and then I'll do this, and then I'll try to do this. Okay, I've got these all cut out. I've got the writing stuff ready um, for the craft. I will say one thing I'm gonna try this week is to give them pieces that are cut out a little bit more versus having like a lot of extra space around it because my kids just wanna be done so fast that when they cut, they don't cut on the lines like they know they're supposed to. So if I give them a paper with most of it already trimmed off, then I'm hoping, they because I'll tell them they need to cut it, so I'm hoping they'll actually cut on the lines. Does that make sense? Because like a lot of my kids like this would be like, that's what they would do. So I want them to try a little bit harder to cut on the lines. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know how that works. Well, another thing I need to do is <laughs> label these drawers. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then that's like extra and other stuff, but that's done. Done that and now I'm going to update the sight words. Okay, that's updated. I do have to print the word of and I have to print the word come for next week or come or some, I can't remember. Um, but if you're new to my channel and this is the first video you're watching, these are our sight word cards. They're I words. I have an affiliate link in my bio, but each of the cards has a word, a picture to remember, a phrase, and a body motion. And so this is little and you do this little boy have a headache and we like do this with our heads. Play, play ball. Like they know the motions for all of them and it's really, really helpful. So you can get um, physical copies, like actual cards, and they'll have like the phrase and everything on the back, or you can get digital and print them and laminate them, which is what I did just because I didn't want to wait like I wanted them immediately. And I've already explained how I organize this. I also cleaned off this table. This is coming home with me. So yay, this is exciting. Okay, brand new, brand new, looking good. Our new anchor charts look good. I kind of updated the bookshelf a little bit with some books we'll be reading in April because I figured why not. Everything over here is updated. I do need to laminate some centers for this. Oh, I need to add this to my list to make. Was there anything else I needed to add to my list? I don't think so. I remembered the big thing that I wanted to add is that next week is parent teacher conferences and I do my signups on Sign Up Genius. I have a video, I'll link it right up here if you're interested in seeing how I kind of structure my parent teacher conferences, but using the, sorry, I'm like fixing my hair as I'm talking to you. Using the Sign Up Genius link has always worked really well for me. And then I'm going to do um, a little conference sheet. So when I'm doing conferences in person, I actually will still have my laptop right next to me. I'll have all, like, all the students work with me too. And this is a long video, I already know, I'm so sorry. Um, but what I do is I have the student notes, my little form filled out, and then at the end I have them type their signature, the parents, as like a little digital signature, just for the heck of it. And I also, after our conference, will print the notes, not right away, but I'll send them home like the next day, um, so that they have like a record of it. And I'm still gonna use the notes that I would normally use, the form, um, that I would use in a normal school year, except since it's online, I will just share the screen with them and then I will print them a copy and send it home. So the only thing that I won't have is like their signature. So I'll show you what it looks like, an actual example from like one of my students last year. Again, I have a whole video explaining this, but um, this is an actual sheet that I filled out. So this box, this box, and this box I had typed up before I saw the parent. This last box, I kind of said what we talked about and any like notes we have. This is where I had them sign, so I literally just had them type their name um, and my name was here and then I printed it the next day and gave it to them so they had a record. And I really, really like this format. It also really helps um, during conferences because you have something to go off of. Um, and my parents have had a lot of communication with me so far, so I mean, none of these things are gonna be a surprise anyway, but it's just a nice little record and it's available on my TPT and I have a whole video explaining more in depth on how I do conferences if you wanna know. But I thought maybe seeing like my real life notes might help you. I'll show you another. Okay, here's another student example just in case you wanna see some of my wording. And again, this is the only thing that like we had in our notes section. So yeah, so there's two examples. Okay, I do have to end this vlog at some point. I know, so sad. I don't know how my vlogs are always this long. I haven't edited one bit and I know it's long. I'm sorry, I hope it was informative. I feel like it was really informative and really interesting. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that I didn't talk enough about or that you wanna see more, or if there's something that you really liked seeing in this video that you wanna continue seeing, let me know because your feedback really helps. Um, otherwise, I just go off on these little tangents. As I do, but yeah, I had a great, um, actually I didn't have a great week. <laughs>
yeah, I'm hanging in there. Things are not super easy. I'm grateful always for your support, for your help. Um, if you want to, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram. Keep up with me there. I post pretty often in my stories, not so much my feed. I'm trying really hard. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.